You're on, Bernie. All right. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for taking time out of this dark, dreary evening to spend it with, with all of us here from Bethel and from PACE and from some of our partners to talk about energy efficiency and um, heat pump technology. Um, you, can, you can write this down in your diary. This is the premiere. This is the first time we've actually gotten together with any public audience. So for those of you who are joining from the public, congratulations, this is a premiere. Um, to sort of set the stage, um, this is really an education uh, pr program and um, it, it is going to be called a campaign called Heat Smart, which um, we'll talk about a little bit in a few slides. Um, but in, on the next slide, uh, which Jennifer, which I'm sorry, Deb flashed up. We have been work, we pace, and you'll learn about us in a, in a minute, Deb will take us through that, have been working closely with a wonderful group of people who serve the people of Bethel, namely the Bethel Energy Conservation Committee. Um, I'm hopeful that William Craddy, who is the, the chair of that committee, will join us a little bit later. He had another commitment, but he could give you a more detailed perspective, but like many towns, many fortunate towns in Connecticut um, who have one of these committees, conservation committees or a clean energy committee or, or something along those lines, it's a group of dedicated uh, volunteers from the town who really work together to bring clean energy options, efficiency options, sustainability options to the residents. And I know that Bill and the other members of that committee have been working hard on continuing to fulfill that mission at the same time that Bethel has just recently adopted a broad umbrella of sustainability of which clean energy is a key, but not the only part. So um, its, its mission is really to improve the uh, energy supply and the way Bethel heats and cools and gets its energy and that's, and that's why they're working alongside of PACE on, on this program. And as you'll see tonight, this program has some wonderful partners, not all of whom are here tonight, but uh, enough that we can give you a good flavor of what we have in store. And Deb, with, with that, maybe I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thanks, Bernie. And thank you to the Bethel Energy Conservation Committee for having us here tonight and to the town of Bethel. We're really excited to get this Heat Smart program off the ground. Um, I know there's a handful of you on tonight um, from the town of Bethel. So if you have any questions, you know, feel free to put them in the chat. We're definitely going to have a question answer period at the end. And you have a lot of experts here to answer your questions tonight. So um, type away, right? So before we get to that, uh, I just give you a little background on People's Action for Clean Energy. We are a nonprofit in Connecticut and our mission is to help all 169 towns in Connecticut transition to 100% clean, renewable energy. So I'm really happy to be a part of that mission and excited that we can help the town of Bethel in its transition to that because I know they're on the same path. Um, and to give you a background about what we do, uh, we have a lot of initiatives, but three of the ones that we've been focusing on this past year are um, our energy model. And what that is, is a baseline analysis for each town that we work with of their overall energy usage in that town in terms of transportation and building, which are two of the largest, if not the largest users of energy in a community. Um, so with that, the towns can then take that baseline information and create an energy plan. So many, many towns in Connecticut are starting to create these energy plans. Um, so that's what the, a little bit about the energy model. You can check out our website if you wanna learn more. And we do this free for any town that's interested. So if you happen to be on this call and you're not from Bethel, um, we can do that for your town. Uh, our second initiative, which we're super, super excited about is our solar canopy initiative. 
Uh, we just finished a study to look at all of the impervious surfaces in Connecticut and see where um, solar could be sited on those using solar canopies. And what we discovered was that nearly 40% of all of our electricity needs in Connecticut could be taken care of with solar canopies. And what that means is um, we can site solar on already disturbed areas like parking lots and brownfields rather than taking up prime um, agricultural and forest lands. So that's pretty cool. And of course, tonight we're here to talk about HeatSmart. Um, hey, hey Deb, yeah. Deb, let me interrupt you and say, I, I see that Bill, Bill Craddy has, has joined us. I think he was able to get out of his prior commitment. Welcome, welcome, Bill. And, um, and um, so we'll, we'll back up and, and uh, give him yeah. a chance to give a better introduction to the Energy Conservation Committee than I did. And also, Bill, when you finish your um, comments, would you give Amisha Malkani a few, a few um, moments? She, she has a few words as well. Yeah, well, the, the Bethel Energy Committee was put together to uh, basically uh, promote uh, energy efficiency within town facilities and uh, for uh, citizens of the, of the town of Bethel. And what we had, we've accomplished uh, quite a bit, we've done a total energy upgrade of all the town buildings several years ago. We got the LEDs all over the place, building management systems up and programmed uh, variable speed drives and energy efficient motors uh, in all the town buildings and whatever. Uh, we've also uh, in, had uh, installed a one megawatt solar farm on top of the abandoned landfill in the town of Bethel to make use of that. And uh, we had a, a sponsored a, a uh, uh, solar program um, uh, that, that um, I forget what the name of it was, it was several years ago, but where we reached out to town residents and went through the, uh, the I think it was a Green Bank sponsored type program and, and um, had uh, solar, similar to what the, the Heat Smart program is going to be. Uh, we also have attempted, uh, we had just completed installing solar on uh, three uh, school buildings within the town of Bethel. And all of Bethel schools, as well as the police station, are in what's called the school park altogether, as well as uh, elderly housing project. And one of the, the projects that we've got on, a, on, on our list to do is, is to create a microgrid uh, to we can add a whole bunch more solar and, and other energy efficiency and pick up the entire load for all the facilities that are within the school park uh, electric uh, grid, so to speak. Uh, and that would also help sustainability in terms of when there is long-term power outages, we'd have full use of those facilities and they are also designated as emergency shelters, uh, you can feed everybody through the kitchens in the town of Bethel or whatever. So uh, that's basically what we have done to date. There's more that, that we have attempted to do, but have been sort of temporarily um, sidelined. Uh, we wanna put uh, solar canopies in the parking lot behind town hall. Uh, we made a proposal and went out and got an RFP on that, but the building uh, the, the planning and zoning sort of shut that down because they think they're going to build a big parking garage there and they're not going to so we're just being patient to wait and we'll be able to put solar canopies uh, uh, there uh, one of the things too is we're working the town has just uh, authorized the creation of a, a sustainability commission to which the energy committee will be folded into as an arm of the sustainability commission uh, and part of that also includes electrification of town vehicles. Uh, the school its, uh, school board is, is uh, um, pursuing uh, their bus company for uh, a pilot program to electrify up to 10 buses, uh, school buses within the town uh, using uh, uh, the, the, uh, the made application, I believe, at least they told me they were going to uh, for the Volkswagen uh, monies. 
to be able to create that. So we've got a lot going on, a lot of it centered around solar, but there are other technologies uh, like the heat pumps uh, that they all aggregate together. Um, you know, you can't do one thing without obviously positively affecting other uh, aspects of sustainability in the energy uh, formulation. So that's basically the uh, Bethel Energy Committee and what we've done so far. And we're 10 years old this year. So we hope to continue for another 10. It's quite, a, quite an accomplishment for a 10 year old. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. So, Amisha, Amisha right. would you say a few words? Yes. Um, good evening. My name is Amisha Malkani. I am a senior in Bethel High School. With my creative art capabilities, I am supporting the Bethel Heat Smart campaign's marketing efforts. I would like to thank Commander Duenels for mentoring me on this capstone project. I'd also like to thank Mr. Knickerbocker and Pace for their support to this project, which provides me with this with the opportunity to contribute to potential energy savings for our town's residents, while also contributing to a sustainable earth. Thank you for attending today and future events. Thank you, Amisha. It's really exciting to have some youthful energy and, and the, the work that Bethel's doing is just a, a model, I think, to other towns as well. So, um, Back to our Heat Smart program. <laughs> uh, basically, what the Heat Smart program is all about is a home energy efficiency. It's an outreach and education program to help residents understand how they can make their home more comfortable and what options are out there in terms of heating and cooling, because it can be really confusing sometimes to know, you know, which HVAC person to go with, what is a HESS, what is this and that. So that's where HeatSmart comes in. We're here to help um, guide you through the process, maybe save you some money along the way, hopefully, and give you the knowledge that you need to um, go down this path and make your home more energy efficient. And then um, this graph actually shows a, a historic look at Bethel's participation in Energize CT. And you can see that the yellow line is Bethel and the green line is the state average. So Bethel historically has been a little lower than the state average. So part of the Heat Smart program is to get that yellow line up above the green line so that, that Bethel is exceeding the state average on its HES participation. And you know, ideally we would want everybody in Bethel to have a HES audit. Um, and we'll talk about those in a minute and why they're so important. But again, why does energy efficiency matter? And I can think of three reasons right off the top. So when your home is more energy efficient, it's more comfortable, um, it can be more safe using some of these systems rather than the traditional ones. A lot of us are concerned about our impact on the planet. So when your home is more efficient, your uh, home is giving off fewer greenhouse gas emissions. And then the last one, I don't know anybody who doesn't like to save a little money. So when your home is more energy efficient, you're um, spending less on energy. And you can see the chart at the bottom is showing that the Energy Information Administration is predicting the prices of fuels in all categories to rise this winter. So propane by over 50%, oil by over 40% and gas by 30%. So those are pretty substantial increases. So uh, getting your home energy efficient now could help you save some this winter. Not only that, but Eversource just announced a 30% increase in the standard rate for power for yeah. the next six months. Right. So everybody chime in when you feel like that's good and type those questions in the chat. Bernie keeps an eye on the chat for me because I'm not so good at that. So, um, In our minds, home energy efficiency is a three-step process. So first you want to evaluate what you have, right? You want to look at your home, which is what the HES audit does. They send in certified technician that spend two to four hours with you in your home and they do the safety checks and then they do all that air sealing. So where is your house leaky? And they seal it all up. 
And then with that also, they'll check the insulation for you. And um, putting insulation on your home is key, right? It's like that winter coat for your house. And then the third step is to electrify your heating system. So most of us are still using the old, I'm gonna call them old fashioned at this point, <laughs> oil and propane and all of that. And um, there are more efficient ways to heat and cool your home now. And that is uh, with a heat pump, which we'll talk all about in a little bit. And we have real experts here to <laughs> talk about Hess visit. But um, this is one of Bertie's newest favorite videos, <laughs> which is my Hess visit that I had. Um, and so I'm just going to share that with you. I had this recently. And here we go. Hi, this is Deb with Pace, and I just wanted to share the results of my recent home energy solutions audit that I had. And to tell you the truth, I wish I'd done this a lot earlier. The certified energized CT techs come out and for $50 or sometimes even free, they do hundreds of dollars worth of work on your home. So here's what they did. One of the first things they did was a lower door test. The blower door test measures the air tightness of your home. Our house was pretty leaky. They checked the emissions on our old oil burner. They added weather stripping to our doors. They sealed all the nooks and crannies in our house. They even gave us new LED light bulbs. These simple fixes could save me as much as $600 a year. This Hess audit is a right idea. All right, there you go. Hi, this is <laughs> Oops, enough of that. Um, so with that, we have Ryan, I believe, right? Ryan, are you still with us? <laughs> so with you. Awesome. New England Smart Energy. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can share your screen and give us a better look at what a HES audit is all about. Sure. So let me see if I can get this up here. Do you guys we can see, see this? We can see yeah. that. And Ryan, before you take take off, um, just to in introduce, we have two um, HESS contractors, um, Northeast and EcoSmart, and New England, I should say, and EcoSmart. And they're both going to be working with us. So you're going to hear from both both partners tonight. Or you'll have, so just want to let you know that there, there's two. So we have a, we have a choice. And uh, they're, they're both they're both great. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks. All right. So yeah, just to give, uh, give you guys uh, a brief rundown um, on who we are. Uh, we're a New England Smart Energy Group. We are a vendor of home energy solutions, as well as home energy solutions income eligible. Um, for anyone who's not familiar, home energy solutions is a statewide utility-based program. So it's administered by Energy CT, which is all the state utility companies, ever source unit illuminating, gas companies. Um, and it's basically available to all Connecticut residents that are a rate payer of those utilities. Uh, it's a heavily subsidized program in the sense that it's funded by um, rate payers, utility bills, and um, people only have to pay a small copay in order to get the full benefits of the assessment. Um, so to get into some of the benefits of an assessment overall, um, you're going to save money. Uh, as Deb mentioned, obviously everyone you know, loves saving money. You save energy, lowering your carbon footprint. Um, and comfort is something that's kind of hard to put a value on, but eliminating drafts from your home or issues with distribution of heating systems, things like that. Another really crucial uh, thing that we take a look at is health and safety issues that might be in the home. We test for all sorts of things, um, you know, gas leaks on any natural gas or propane lines. We test for carbon monoxide issues with heating system uh, exhausts. Um, we try to identify other potential issues like mold or asbestos containing materials. Um, so that's another great benefit of having the assessment performed. And beyond that, when we take a look at more big picture measures, we can link people up with a lot of resources, um, such as incentives, show them how to take advantage of financing on larger measures. And uh, this year, especially, a lot of the incentives are higher than they've been in the past, which, which is great. 
Um, so to touch on uh, some of the finer details, uh, first of all, a home energy solutions visit can be performed uh, mainly single family homes, but also multifamily homes up to four units. Anything beyond four units uh, becomes a, it's considered part of the multifamily program, which is a, a slightly different initiative. We're not going to focus too much on that uh, right now, but with home energy solutions, like I said, I, I like to think of it as, as kind of uh, three main phases. So initially, we're doing a, a thorough inspection. We're identifying, like I said, potential safety issues, doing combustion safety testing of, of heating systems, fireplaces, gas ovens, whatever it may be. Um, then comes kind of what is considered the core services of the assessment. So these are instant savings measures that we're implementing right on site. Probably the biggest and most beneficial is weatherization or air sealing. So you guys saw a, a quick picture of the blower door test. Lower door guided air sealing um, is, is uh, probably the most valuable component of the assessment in terms of what goes on during the assessment. And a blower door test for anyone who's not familiar is a really incredible diagnostic tool. It's essentially a large fan which depressurizes the home. So picture you close all the windows, all the exterior doors of the house, a big fan sucks air out of the house. In doing so, we're able to do two things. One, we can measure overall how airtight the house is. Therefore, we know how much opportunity for improvement there is. And two, the test will allow us to identify specific areas of heat loss or air infiltration, um, which then kind of shows us where we need to focus on in terms of sealing. So in terms of sealing itself, we can do a lot of weatherization measures that it could include weather stripping doors and windows, caulking of trims or areas of, of draft, um, installing door sweeps, spray foaming in attics and basements, penetrations going to the living space, all kinds of things like this. Um, and you can see a lot of uh, potential savings just from tightening up the, the envelope of the home. The other core service measures would be lighting. So we'll take a look at the lighting of the house. If there's any older inefficient lights, uh, halogens, incandescents, things like that. We can install up to 25 LED bulbs, including many different styles. We also, um, people are allowed to purchase additional bulbs beyond that limit at a, at a subsidized rate if they, if they want more. And we'll also take a look at uh, some hot water saving measures such as insulating hot water pipes um, or installing lower flow faucet aerators or shower heads if desired. Um, also, should have mentioned ductwork as well. And a similar test to lower door testing, we can test the tightness of, of uh, heating distribution systems, ductwork in homes, and then seal gaps and cracks on those systems as well, which can be crucial um, for their performance. So those are kind of the, the core service measures. And kind of the final stage, which brings everything together is trying to identify deeper measures that may be needed. So these are our larger measures, things we can't necessarily do during, you know, a three or four hour assessment. But um, so we'll take a look at, I mean, literally everything that involves energy efficiency, but especially heating and cooling systems, insulation, windows, appliances, thermostats, all of that stuff. And in doing so, what we're going to do is, first of all, uh, you know, determine what's needed, talk to the customer about it. Um, which is key because a lot of people aren't super familiar with all these systems and all the different options and it can be kind of a lot to wrap your head around. So it's great to have, you know, a professional come out. They've looked at everything. They've tested the house. They say, okay, these are really your biggest priorities in terms of moving forward. These are going to be the best returns on investment. These are going to yield you the greatest savings. And what we'll also do is take a look at um, incentives that they may qualify for. So through doing the assessment itself, um, we can qualify people for rebates on uh, areas that need improvement. Some of these rebates are extremely substantial, such as insulation. Um, in many cases, over 80% of the cost of job, if it's a straightforward job, can be covered by uh, the rebates, which can also be reassigned, meaning basically people just pay the cost, uh, the, the cost difference after the rebate. Um, but there's rebates on all kinds of things, windows and, and heating and cooling and all that. There's also a lot of... Uh, different incentives. They're, they don't necessarily work like mail-in rebates, but they're available to Connecticut residents. Um, and we'll kind of explain to people what's out there, 
and how they can use it. On top of incentives, there's also a lot of really incredible um, financing options. Um, in a lot of cases, interest as low as 0%, but um, for larger loans, as low as 1% or 0.99% on up to 10 year terms on things like uh, heat pumps, especially, um, but all kinds of heating system replacements. Um, so basically we'll just explain the resources that are available and um, kind of point people in the right direction. They'll get a report at the end of the assessment that summarizes what we did, what their estimated savings are based on the work, what our professional recommendations are um, going forward and, and all of that. Um, so, um, now if another, so do you guys want me to touch on income eligible as well, or is that going to be, um, um, let me just ask, we don't have anybody from EcoSmart on the line. Deb, right? um, let me ask Glenn Butler to uh, unmute. Um, he had to dial in by phone. I, I'm not sure we'll be, if we don't overcome the technical difficulty, then Ryan will ask you to go ahead. Sure. Uh, Let's see, it's, it's, it's so far I'm not able to get him to unmute. Hey, Glenn, I don't know if you have a button you can push to make yourself unmute. If not, no worries. I think Ryan's got a, a slide up and he can cover the HES IE. Um, income eligible is what that stands for. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to touch on that if, uh, if that okay. works better. Yeah, I th go. I think I think go ahead, and that, that'll uh, that'll let uh, Glenn uh, off the, uh, the the Zoom technical difficulty hook that he's on right now. <laughs> sure. So. Yeah. No. No problem. So uh, has income eligible or has IE? Um, it's it's very similar in the sense that a lot of the core services are the same. However, um, if people qualify based on income, they can receive even higher incentives and even greater benefits of the assessment. So, for example. Um, and in a HES income eligible job, there's no cap on the amount of LEDs we can install where it's 25 free LEDs uh, with the HES. By, by free, I mean included within the copay, which, which right now, I, I should have mentioned this, is, is $50. There's a $50 copay, which covers everything I described, regardless of the, the scope of weatherization. Um, and an income eligible job- SIE, right, Ryan? HES IE is free, right? SIE is 100% free. HES, yeah. there's a $50 copay currently. Um, with income eligible, it's free if you qualify based on income. It's a very simple application process. You do need to provide either proof of income or signing an affidavit of zero income. Um, if you qualify, like I said, there's no limit on LEDs, but even, even bigger than that, uh, the incentives on larger measures are much greater. So with HES, let's say you need insulation, we're gonna sign off on a rebate which will cover large portions of the cost. We can also provide a proposal for the work. Um, with income eligible, it's a little different. We basically submit proposals to the utilities and in many cases, they'll cover up to 100% of the cost, oftentimes 100% of the cost on insulation. And even things like uh, larger measures like windows and heating systems, um, especially heat pumps, they'll cover up to 100% of the cost. Just recently, I've seen a lot of income eligible jobs that have gotten triple pane windows throughout the whole house, completely covered, insulating walls, attics, basements, spray foaming rim joists, completely covered. And in some cases, even um, uh, heat pump systems, mini splits or ducted heat pumps, whatever it may be covered in full as well through, through the IE program. Um, with the HES program, the rebates are still good, but um, you know there's typically gonna be some kind of copay left over. So if people do qualify based on income, it's, it's, it's great for these kind of upgrades. Um, the exact thresholds, I don't have the figures in front of me, but you know, we could provide, um, could provide I've got that, Ryan. I can share that in, in sure. my screen. Um, and this goes for like, if so say you own a rental property, it's based on tenant income. So if it's low income tenants, it doesn't matter what your income is. If they qualify based on income, we can do a HESIE assessment on that property. Um, so in that, in that case, Ryan, even if, if I'm a landlord and my tenant is, is low income, my tenant can benefit from the comfort um, and safety su support that you all will, will provide. And I, the landlord, will actually have my, my property improved by some of the measures that you're, you're able to do. So it's, it's kind of a win-win. 
Absolutely. Yeah. In a lot of cases, the tenants are the ones who are, well, obviously the ones living there. So they're affected by, you know, the comfort and the drafts and things like that. But in many cases, they're also the ones paying the utilities. So they'll directly benefit in that way as well. As the landlord, of course, you benefit from, you know, value added to the property, um, you know, whatever it may be, triple pane windows and, and everyone benefits, of course, from, um, you know, the reduction in emissions and, and increased energy efficiency in that sense. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you. Um, so we do have the income eligible chart here. Um, it goes All right, I'm gonna, I'll pass it back over, pass it oh. back over to you guys. And, okay. and Thanks, actually, guys. thank yeah, you, guys. you as you flat, thank you, as you flash that up, there are some great questions, a couple great questions and a comment in, in the chat. So, so what Deb is showing is the, um, the household size and annual income guidelines. If you're, if you are the homeowner or, or the tenant and you fall under these guidelines, it's most likely that you are going to be eligible for HES income eligible. And um, Stephanie just wants to remind people that in the regular HES program, um, the LED light bulbs are, are not going to be continued into 2022. The reason being that at this point, the assumption is most people have those and it's not an incremental measure. However, if the HES income eligible program, the, the free LED light bulbs will continue um, for, for a bit longer. So that's, that's one comment. Um, comment from, from Sherry, and this is a good question. Last time I had an energy audit, part of this actually all the way back in Solarized Bethel, uh, the rebates had a very short window to be used. Is that still the case? Should I hold off doing another audit until I'm ready to do a larger household project? Yeah, so to, uh, to respond to that, uh, it depends when, you, unfortunately, it kind of depends when you do the assessment because a lot of times the rebates will be set for one year. So for example, if you signed up to do an assessment on January 1st of this year, you would have received an insulation rebate that expires on March 31st of 2022. If you signed up for a assessment tomorrow, you would receive the same rebate. So that being said, uh, you can request extensions on rebates through Energy CT, and they're very often granted. We can't promise people they'll be granted, but in my experience, they almost always grant extensions if needed. Yeah. And there is uncertainty because uh, I actually this HES program and HES IE are in, in high demand and there is a, a finite amount of money. So my un, unschooled sort of advice is to get in line as, as quickly as is possible. Um, and I do want to pass on uh, Di Diane's question. If we already had a home energy audit through Connecticut Light and Power years ago, probably also a, a Solarize uh, participant, do they do anything different now? So, so in other words, if I had it a bunch of years ago, is it, should I get another one? I would definitely say yes. I've done probably, I mean, at this point, I've been with this company for probably so close to six years now. I've probably done hundreds of assessments on homes that have been assessed prior. And I would say it's extremely rare to find a home where there's no opportunity to continue weatherizing or changing lights or finding additional measures. Um, there's almost always something that you can dig up. Plus, you know, caulking cracks over time, weather stripping wears thin, and considering the, the cost of the assessment is is so small, it's it's almost always worth it if you if you can revisit it. Yeah, and unless you're you know very certain your house is extremely tight and insulated and you've done everything you can, you know. But generally speaking, I would definitely recommend it. Ryan, that, that was fantastic. All good points. Um, and I will say um, what Bernie was touching on is that because HES IE is in such demand, most companies are booking out a couple of months now, right? So I don't know where EcoSmart and New England are right now, but I know other companies, they're booking into like December and January at this point. And to repeat, I think Diane, the cost the cost is fifty dollars if you're in the, if you're not in income eligible. So it's a it's pretty much 
uh, a halfway decent dinner for two and you're, and you're gonna get probably a thousand dollars worth of services. Yeah, get your light bulbs, right? <laughs> um, so we mentioned that the second step was to insulate your home. And that is one of the things that the HESS folks check is they'll check the insulation on your home. And when I did my HESS audit, I learned that I had no insulation in my walls and my attic. And so I'm really hoping when the insulation comes the end of this month that maybe I won't hear the leaf blowers as much and the airplanes as much and everything will just be nicer. So um, that's the second step. And then the third step, as we mentioned, is to consider transitioning from your traditional heating system, whether it's oil or propane or electric resistance to a heat pump. And I know we have Jennifer Freely here, um, be but before we get to that, so I would just say that um, the heat pump is sort of a misnomer. It's a really bad name because these really energy efficient systems can heat and cool your home. They're the most efficient heating systems on the market. Um, and they work the same way as your refrigerator works. So they take, they don't have to create heat. They're transferring it from one place to another. And there are two types of heat pumps that are generally used in homes. There's air source heat pumps, and then there's ground source heat pumps. And you may be familiar with ground source as geothermal. You may have heard that term. And we have Dandelion here tonight to talk about those a little later. And uh, I don't know if Jennifer, if she's willing, can talk about air source heat pumps. Otherwise, um, Bernie or I will go ahead and do that. So let me just move to the next slide that I have here. Um, Bernie, yeah. do you see it? <laughs> I think, I think um, maybe, let me just uh, take these slides. Uh, okay. uh, so uh, Jen, Jennifer Friedley is with 2020 um, Air. They are very close to Bethel. They're based in, I think, New Milford. And they are our education outreach partner for air source heat pumps. Um, and what you see before you, trust me, at the end of this session, you're not going to be a, an HVAC uh, professional. This is just a, a thumbnail introduction to this technology. Uh, what you see here is, uh, this is a Mitsubishi, um, and that's the outdoor unit. I'm gonna guess that everybody on this call has walked down the street, see, seen these, maybe it hasn't registered um, exactly what they do, but the, uh, these heat pumps, the outdoor unit, is basically responsible for either taking your indoor heat in the summertime and throwing it back out into the outdoors, or believe it or not, uh, on a cold night, even much colder than tonight, um, grabbing that ambient heat that is out there in, in the outside and, and drawing it indoors. And so I've, I'm gonna guess at this moment, I've lost at least a couple of you because you are going to say, Bernie, it's cold out. There is no heat out there. And, and I'm going to argue with you, not, not at great length, but just to say that there is heat out there. One of the, you can look this up, the absolute zero, at the point at which there is no heat out there is about minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. So even in Bethel, it doesn't get that cold very, very often. So there actually is a lot of heat out there. And these, these machines are able to operate effectively down well, but well below um, pre freezing. And the four little units that you see up on top of this slide are the indoor units, uh, ceiling cassettes and wall cassettes. And the, what's really cool about these is you can, you can put them in one room, you can get one outside unit with multiple rooms. You can really have complete, as many zones as you have rooms. Um, and they are typically um, remote controlled. So you can sit there, watch TV and say, I wanna be warmer. and Click it, and, it, and it, will, it will become warmer. So air source heat pump, very flexible in this, in this modality. 
um, customizable as many zones as you want and efficient down to very low temperatures. Right, and so these are um, ductless units. They also have ducted, especially if you already have a, a system in place for maybe air conditioning, you could use that. Um, the, the air would come up through registers in the floor. So there's lots of different options and it's best to um, really make an appointment with an HVAC person and, and they'll come to your house, walk you through everything and the different options. And um, that's the best way to go about it. And that's where HeatSmart helps. We help uh, get you in touch with folks. All right, um, at this point, we're gonna learn about ground source heat pumps. I am going to stop sharing and hand it over to our friends at Dandelion and Corey all yours. I think you're mute. <laughs> you there we go. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Perfect. And can you see my screen? Perfectly. Very nice. All right. Well, um, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me this evening. My name is Corey. I'm a senior energy consultant for Dandelion Energy. I've worked with them for uh, almost three years now. Um, I actually moved my family from um, Central Coast, California to Fishkill, New York to work for Dandelion um, about three years ago. They were, um, I think we had at the time, like 50 or 60 customers installed and um, pretty new and uh, up and coming technology. Um, but, you know, I think the, as we all have seen, <clears throat> not just in the presentations tonight, but um, in, uh, you know, a lot of what's going ar uh, around in the world is that um, the push towards clean energy, uh, that, that fight has never been uh, more important than it is today. And so one of the things that we're doing at Dandelion is um, we are um, <clears throat> essentially uh, coming up with a solution where you do not need natural gas, you do not need oil, uh, you do not need um, any combustion whatsoever to heat or cool your home. Um, and much like the air source heat pumps that we just learned about, um, these ground source heat pumps um, tend to be a little bit more efficient. Um, and for a couple of reasons, we'll talk about why that is. Um, but ultimately, whether it's air sourced or ground sourced, uh, it, it's helping us to accomplish the same goal, which is electrification. So uh, we're on board with, uh, with both technologies for sure. <clears throat> um, let me see here. So uh, as far as who Dandelion is, we started out in 2016 um, out of uh, Google, Google's parent company, Alphabet. Um, they had a, a moonshot program. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is a think tank uh, basically where um, you know, we didn't, for any by any stretch of the imagination, create geothermal. Um, we just simply wanted to figure out a way to overcome uh, its greatest obstacle when it comes to scalability, which is um, the upfront infrastructure costs. So the idea was, let's figure out a way to simply cut someone's existing furnace out of the ductwork, utilize all of the existing infrastructure for the home, um, and, uh, and then slide our heat pump right in its place, uh, simply land the plumbing, the electrical and the ductwork. And now you have a heating and a cooling system um, that uh, does not require combustion. Um, we have a um, little over a thousand customers to date. Uh, we started out in 2016, uh, moved to New York to kind of prove concept. We really did proof concept and became very proficient at what we were doing. Um, and, uh, and then we uh, were infused with an additional uh, round of funding, bringing our total funding up to about $65 million uh, with this most recent round coming from Bill Gates's Breakthrough Energy Ventures. This gave us a really good runway to continue our expansion. Um, so we've uh, broken into several other markets. Um, all of Connecticut we are serving now um, Massachusetts, Vermont, uh, and then Western New York, Long Island, and then, you know, upstate New York from there. 
Um, our uh, president and founder uh, has this saying, I really enjoy this a lot. In the future, when people look back, combusting a fuel inside your house will seem like a weird thing to do. And I meet with so many people on a regular basis and, and, um, and I am like blown away coming from the West Coast that fuel oil was something that we were actually burning in our basements, let alone some of my clients are actually still burning coal uh, in their basements, believe it or not. So uh, moving away from that technology is super important. Um, so in New York and also in Connecticut as well, uh, homes and buildings are the second highest source of greenhouse gas em uh, emissions. Um, transportation being the first, homes and buildings being the second, and then along down the line we go. Um, a lot of folks do look to solar uh, as you know one of the primary things they can do um, to address some of the, uh, the carbon offset for the home. Um, what we find, though, is actually that a very significant amount of, of a home's carbon emissions come from heating, cooling, and water heating. And so that's, that's really what we wanted to address with Dandelion. The heat exchange process is very straightforward, very simple. Um, what we know to be true <clears throat> is that um, about four or five feet below the surface, it's a constant 50 to 53 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on which climate zone you're in. It doesn't matter if it's 110 degrees outside or negative 10 degrees outside. Um, the temperature beneath the frost line um, is that constant temperature. And for the same reasons why basements don't really require a whole lot of heating and virtually no cooling, um, it's the same reason why we're able to get a constant baseline out of that, um, that temperature beneath the, uh, the lawn. And so what we do is we've, we identify a couple places on the property. We're gonna drill down um, typically vertical boreholes um, and a borehole is gonna be roughly five inches in diameter. And we're going to put in a closed loop system that's going to go down into the ground and come back up. And then we're going to fill that loop with a combination of 78% water, 22% propylene glycol. It's a non-toxic antifreeze. And so what happens is that water solution goes down into the ground and it comes back up and goes into the basement, into the heat pump. And, uh, and from there, that gives us our baseline. We're gonna use a little bit of physics, a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of electricity to boost that temperature up to roughly 105 or 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and then simply blow air over 105 or 110 degree coil. That's how we're able to heat the house. In the summertime, the reverse is true. We're actually gonna use the ductwork to pull that hot, humid air out of the house and much like a traditional AC, uh, and, uh, and we're going to um, then dump that heat into the ground and bring back up the 50 degree uh, temperature. And then we're gonna use a reverse refrigeration process to cool the coil down to roughly 20, 20 degrees Fahrenheit and blow air over the coil that way. This is what a typical borehole will look like. Um, this, this piping system, it kind of looks like PVC pipe that uh, you, you would see um, pretty regularly, um, but it's actually something called HDPE, so high density polyethylene. Um, it's a lot less rigid and uh, it actually comes on two spools. So when we put it into the ground, um, we drill the hole first. And then once we have our bore, bore hole there, we bring this, this pipe system together, we bring the, the loops down and if you imagine like a straw bent over upon itself with like the loop end at the bottom and you kind of feed the straw into the hole that way, that's really what we're doing here. So it's one long continuous pipe going all the way down and then coming all the way back up with its first real connection point right up here at the top. So then we'll 90 degree over, we'll then bring those geothermal lines right into the basement. Uh, we'll have a return and a supply. Um, We'll seal them up, we'll reinforce them, we'll pressurize them, make sure they don't leak. And then when we're done, we'll bury them. And um, probably the worst part of the geothermal process is that these are big drill rigs. We're displacing a lot of earth. Um, it, it does leave a little bit of a mess, but nothing a little seed and topsoil can't fix. Finally, uh, we have the geothermal systems in the basement. Um, 
again, they're, the footprint of these is going to be very, very similar to what you would find with a traditional furnace. So you're typically looking at, you know, two and a half feet wide, three feet deep, five feet tall um, for our standard package system, one that would go in a basement. We also have a solution for folks who have, you know, their air handlers up in an attic. Um, you know, in that case, it's basically this package unit, but cut in half where the bottom half is in the basement and the top half, the air handler is up in the attic. So we really have a solution that, that serves uh, all the needs of our clients. Um, and then lastly, one of the nice things about the geothermal system um, is that it does come with monitoring. So we're able to identify how well the system is performing um, at all times throughout the year. <clears throat> and that's given us not only a tremendous amount of information that um, we've built upon so that we can make our systems more efficient, but it also allows us to diagnose potentially, um, you know, uh, problems with the system before they become catastrophic in nature and the system stops working. And so we don't have to roll a truck nearly as often. And if somebody's got a little problem with their system, they'll call us or oftentimes we'll call them and we'll ask them how their system's performing. And they'll say, well, it's actually not producing as much heat as it did a couple of days ago. And in one case, um, you know, we, we called a client and they uh, they said exactly that. We asked them when the last time they changed their air filter was, and they said, "What air filter?" And uh, and we said, "Oh, well, that's it's a good uh, it's a good thing we called because you definitely need to to change your air filter, uh, you know, a few times a year." But that air filter got clogged. It caused uh, some static pressure to build up, and uh, and so without having to roll a truck, they changed the air filter. The heat was back to off working normally, and uh, all was right with the world. Um, that is pretty much it. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions, you know, as far as pricing is concerned, ballpark pricing for a 2,000, 2,500 square foot home, roughly $150 a month if you wanted to finance it or anywhere between 18 and $22,000 as a net cost after incentives um, is that's kind of the ballpark range for, for having these systems installed. Corey, uh, what a fascinating technology. And I, I love Google, but I wouldn't have associated heat pumps in Google. So thanks for <laughs> connecting, not another link. Bernie, uh, before yeah, we get to all the questions, maybe I can show them um, the website that they go to. Oh, absolutely, Deb, because that's how, how are you going to get a hold of us? That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can. Find the website, right? <laughs> I think it's Do you have know. it up? <laughs> Hold on. I'm showing the wrong. Let me see. Let's see. Can you see that, Deb? Is that visible? Let's see. There you go. Thank you, Bernie. <laughs> I had it ready to go, but I lost Zoom land somewhere. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, so we have. Um, a page for Bethel, it's heatsmartct.org forward slash Bethel. And when you come here, you'll get some um, general information about the program and what we hope to accomplish. And if you click on the get started button, so, so we're just starting to take off. So right now there's a, a temporary contact form there. So um, we'll just be collecting contact information this week and maybe next week we'll have our full form up there we'll ask you a few more questions sorry Barney I already yeah. responded to um yeah. yeah so it just basically asks your name and address and phone number and email and um we would get back to you if you're if you sign up this week but basically um the first step would be your HES audit and then um, we also have a free energy consultant coming on board, um, we expect, and they can walk you through all the rest of the stuff, all the decisions, and they're a nonprofit, they're not making any money, they are not associated with any of the companies, so um, they can give you advice on um, any of your goals that you have for your home. And also sometimes people run into barriers in their home. Uh, Ryan 
mentioned asbestos, mold, um, some other things that would prevent you from going ahead with your energy efficiency. You don't want to seal your house if you have these issues. So um, our energy consultant, I Heart My Home, can look and find those programs that can help you deal with that as well. And we have facts about um, the program and heat pumps. And um, we also have a page uh, with information just on heat pumps. The next one, there I go. Um, that has a, an informational booklet that you can download as well as um, a buying guide. So those are uh, two very helpful resources that I definitely recommend before you uh, go ahead purchasing. And we, and we always recommend to get multiple quotes on um, any HVAC equipment. So, um, so that's a place to start. And then I think, Bernie, if you're set, we can open it up to any questions that folks might have. And I think there might have been another question or two in the chat. There's, uh, can, I, can I jump in with a question? Because one, I think, um, got directed to me, and um, I'm not the person to answer, so I want to ask that. And the question was, does application for geothermal energy depend on whether you have a low enough water table? Um, this person's water table is 10 feet down. I think, am I the only geothermal? Uh, it's, all, it's all yours, Corey, unless you want me to take a shot. So no, <laughs> no, answer. I'm happy. <laughs> Um, no, so it, it's it's not determined whatsoever by uh, high or low water table. Um, geology does play a role in uh, in how deep we drill and how many boreholes are needed. Um, but we fully expect, you know, drilling down 400 or 500 feet that we're going to hit water tables and bedrock and all sorts of uh, of geology. So um, it doesn't it doesn't have an impact whatsoever. Yeah, and and. To my surprise, bedrock is not really an impediment either. If you if you're built on a ledge, that, that's actually a good thing, from what I understand, because it's highly heat transmission is high. It is, and it's actually for dandelion, it's it's less expensive uh, for us, given that um, oftentimes we're putting in steel casing all the way until we get to bedrock to maintain the integrity of the borehole. But when we drill straight into you know ledge and then down into bedrock that rock itself becomes its own sturdy borehole and doesn't require us to install casing, uh, which as you can imagine is very expensive, especially right now. Yeah, for sure. And Corey, while you while you have your mic on, um, you, you mentioned propylene glycol and, it, and somebody, Sherry notes that that is toxic for pets, especially cats. And so the, the, the concern on behalf of cats and kids and dogs is, it, does it ever get out? Is, is leaking a problem? So, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very valid concern. Um, good question. You know, so propylene glycol, uh, as far as how we're installing it, it's a closed loop system. It's fully pressurized in a monitored loop, not to mention it's really diluted in the water mixture. Um, it, we have installed, you know, like I said, I think um, a thousand systems, which is probably close to 4,000 boreholes um you know across the the uh the suite of systems we've installed we don't have leaking problems whatsoever um we we've got one theoretical question uh, which i want to come to but another question from from sherry is and this is this is a, a an important question will a heat pump either air or ground provide all of the heating um it will provide all the cooling but will it provide all the heating needs or does it have to be supplemented with another heating or cooling source? And I think there, there's several answers to that. Corey, I think from the geothermal standpoint, go ahead and take that. Yeah, yeah so we design our systems to accommodate 95% uh, plus of the total heat load of the home, taking into account 10 years of aggregate weather data um, and understanding all of the different aspects of the home. Matter of fact, um, it works out really, really well when we have an HES report to go off of when we're designing a system. Uh, we always encourage our customers to get home. To, to, get, to get an audit so that you can understand that the heat load that your, that your system has to. Um... Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly right. Like we, You're a mind reader. 
we want that we want that um, that information because we don't we don't want to install geothermal and then also have to rely upon a fossil fuel as a backup source. So we do install in some cases where the um, you know where we're below ninety five percent of the heat load with with the heat pump we will install an auxiliary heat strip which can kick in in extreme weather uh, situations to help boost the temperature up from time to time. But the overarching goal is that we don't want that to kick in uh, if, if at all, uh, but especially not more than, than three to 5% of the year. Great, and I'll take a, sh a shot at the, uh, at the air source sort of equivalent answer. So Dandelion has access to, to Mother Earth and she maintains a sort of constant if you forgive the analogy, a constant body temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you can operate in the, in the coldest temperature with really no, no uh, reduction in performance. Air source, um, when you, as it gets colder and colder, as it gets way below zero, they are less efficient. And so, well, it is possible. And there are plenty of people who have totally replaced their heating system with an air source um, system. Uh, I, I, what, I, what I would plan to do myself is to maintain my um, current heating system and add the air source as, as a supplement and take a good amount of the heat load through the heat pump rather than through, the, through my current natural gas system. So to two parts that I answer, it is technically possible, especially if your house is tight if your house is old and drafty, it, it wouldn't be a good move. And in most cases, we would recommend supplementation, i.e. adding an air source heat pump to your, your existing system. Uh, there's also what Corey said, you can put in an air source and then get an addition. You can put in a heating home. strip. Yeah, heating, right, um, supplement there. Uh, just a question, Corey. Um, how long do these systems last? It sounds like they're pretty low maintenance. Yeah, super low maintenance. Um, you know, there's actually no uh, annual service visits required, especially with the monitoring, which, you know, we don't charge anything for the monitoring. It's a byproduct of working with us. But um, we fully expect the heat pumps uh, in themselves to last 25 plus years for the inside equipment. And then the loops in the ground, you're looking at you know 80 to 100 plus years. Uh, it's a non-corrosive, fairly inert material as far as the loop system in the ground. Um, so yeah, I mean you're you're looking at you know a, a a really nice long lifespan with the geothermal system. Um, and you know even though Dandelion hasn't been uh, in business uh, you know long enough to to back up a 25 year um, you know life expectancy. Ground source heat pumps have been around in the United States since the early 70s. So we have a good amount of understanding and precedent to work with. You know, they're not exposed to the elements outside, um, you know, like, uh, like your traditional AC is. And we're not dealing with super high temperatures uh, and combustion causing, you know, rapid expansion and contraction of the heat exchanger. So um, yeah, they, they've got a pretty long life expectancy. Um. Yeah, but I know we, we had sort of a set of pre-planned uh, general questions that we've heard over and over again, and we might want to show that, but there is a question from, uh, from Johnny in the uh, chat, which I want to take a crack at answering, and I'm happy to follow up offline. I don't want to uh, hijack this meeting, but is there any plan for the utility company, Eversource in this case, and UI down on the coast, to upgrade the electrical infrastructure to handle the increased electrical load if heat pump systems are widely installed? That's a super important policy question. And the, the answer is yes. Um, uh, there, in fact, uh, PACE participated along, along with many others on something called the Integrated Resource Plan, the IRP. Uh, there's an update of that every, every couple of years. And its job is to look at the increase loads coming onto the electrical system, not only from heat pump technology, but also from electrification of vehicles and make sure that the system that we have can take the additional load. Um, that's that's a, a general answer. It won't, won't satisfy um, probably the, the questioner, 
but I will say that one of the, one of the things that we won't talk about it tonight, but an individual, a homeowner in, in Bethel or anywhere else in Connecticut can take advantage of putting solar on their roof, which will soak up a lot of that load. And there are, all, are also areas specifically electric resistance heated homes where a heat pump is actually going to decrease the amount of electricity that is, is now used. Did you, um, sorry, Bruno, <laughs> fiddling with these questions. Did yeah. you mention the storage program coming on as well? No, I, I, I didn't. Uh, and another piece of that that Deb is saying is in 2022, the Green Bank of Connecticut is coming out with an electric storage campaign that was a great pairing with, with um, solar and actually with electric heating like heat pumps. Um, it will allow residents and small businesses to get um, access to uh, lithium ion batteries to store electrical engineering. So, Corey, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to also mention that uh, along with solar, uh, geothermal fits into this category as well. But uh, typically we find that homeowners um, who don't have adequate um, uh, electrical, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Service. Uh, service, thank you, geez. Uh, electrical service in their homes, um, they can upgrade their main electrical panel and, um, and they're qualified under the 26% federal tax credit. So uh, if there was ever a time to upgrade your main electrical panel, it would be alongside one of the renewable energies, um, you know, because as we move to electrification totally for our homes and adding electric vehicles and this, that, and the other, that's gonna become more and more important to have the infrastructure in your home to support that. Absolutely. All right, some of these questions, if we don't have any more in the chat, I know um, people sometimes concerned when they join a, a program, if they're committed to use certain contractors or if they're obligated to participate in you know, everything the program is um, suggesting and the answer is no, you do you do as much as you want to. We always suggest, like I said, to get um, multiple quotes for large items, just the way you would for anything. Um, with the HES contractors, we have these wonderful HES contractors for you that you know we're confident in, but if you choose to use another, you can call the 1-800 number. So um, you're not obligated to anything. So it's it's, what we're offering is mostly education and assistance, ways to make things easier for you. Um, all right. Well, I think we answered the rent question. Uh, if you rent, you can definitely still participate. And then uh, the next question we have, how will I know what type of efficiency measures are best for my home? And I tackled this a little bit earlier. Um, we don't have them here tonight, but we have this wonderful, um, organization called I Heart My Home. Uh, they have energy experts on hand and they'll ask you a bunch of questions about your home. They'll ask you to take some photos of things. They'll um, help you figure out whether you have asbestos issues or bar other barriers. And um, they'll ask you what your goals are. Do you, do you, um, you know, plan to put solar on your house? And, and they'll help you figure out a plan to, um, make your home energy efficient and more comfortable. All right, um, tackling this next one, is there a place you can go see heat pumps on display? So there actually is a company called Absolute Air in Portland, Connecticut. They just created the first showroom in Connecticut to our knowledge of Mitsubishi um, air source heat pumps. So you can go there and see all the latest and greatest Mitsubishi things. I think they're open from eight to four. So when they're open, you can go in. And then uh, this one, I don't want to tackle, but <laughs> if anybody else wants to tackle um, the initial outlay of, um, you know, how much does it cost for air source? I guess, you know, Josh answered for ground source, 18 to 22 for most homes after you um, get your rebates. Um, Air source is a whole different ballgame because every house is so individual and what you're what you might want is very individual. But Bernie, I'm gonna toss this your way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Deb. And well, it, 
as the question is is posed, it's, it is kind of un, unanswerable because it really depends on what an air an air source heat pump is so flexible that you can put a single unit that'll serve like your great room or your TV room or, or your your bedroom or something like that, and that that can be under six thousand dollars. Or if you go the whole house and you have a big house, it, it can be up there with uh, the geothermal cost. So I think the, the best way to go at this is to take advantage of our partner 2020 Air and get a sense of what they have to offer on the air source heat pump and contact Dandelion and get a sense of what they have on, on the uh, geo, geothermal side. Um, I, I will say, uh, this for the thank you again for the Bethel, Bethel folks who are joining us. This is the first time the program hasn't even really officially taken off yet. Uh, if we are successful in finding uh, residents who have a system installed, um, we're, we're going to try to get some of those folks who will, will join us in an evening like this and talk about their experience, both good and bad. So if we can if we can set that up, we'll, we can more conclusively answer that question. Uh, so I see Sherry's asking about Green Bank um, financing. Uh, I, there's definitely, I believe, Green Bank financing for this. But that would I, be could, more. I could speak to that briefly, too. Um, All right, go for the, it. The Capital for Change loan um, right now will allow you to finance up to $15,000 at 0.99% interest on a three to 10 year term that will come as a line charge on your monthly utility bill which is an awesome, awesome loan. Um, and there's really no catch other than, it's not really a catch, but they only allow you to use um, installers that they've approved. That being said, most installers in the state are approved through them and there's dozens and dozens and dozens of them. So um, that's a really good place to start. That loan can only be used for, for heating system replacements, but in this case, that's what we're talking about. So it's, it's perfect for that. And let me, if I could throw Diane Ryan's question into the conversation. Uh, she, she asked about uh, electric system upgrades. I think typically if you have a hundred amp service, which a lot of houses have, and if they haven't had any upgrades or any big appliances or air conditioning added, uh, typically you're gonna have to add another hundred amp service to that. So unless your house is giant and Corey, you did a good job of answering, unless you have a, a heavy load elsewhere, um, 200 amps is enough. So, and then also, also on the financing side, um, you know, there's, uh, I can only really speak to geothermal and, and what we have in place at Dandelion, um, but we have, you know, a 10 year or a 20 year option. We can get the monthly payment. If it's an average home, average size home, um, doesn't require a lot of duct modifications or main electrical panel upgrades. But I've seen the monthly payments, you know, get as low as, you know, $140 to $150 a month, um, while at the same time saving someone between $1,500 and $3,000 a year on their, uh, on their fuel bill. So it really can be a, a, a money saver. And almost certainly um, the, the, HES, the HES programs are... Our, our Deb said it at the beginning, and it really is our goal. Right now, uh, roughly over the last 11 years, 15, 16% of Bethel residents uh, have uh, taken advantage of the HES program. All of us who are on this call uh, contribute to funding that program. And so it would, it would be our goal um, to have every resident, unless your house is brand new, to have every resident in Bethel take advantage of this program. That alone is going to save uh, money for lots of people. It's going to save greenhouse gas emissions, um, which will be helpful and, and people will be much more comfortable. So uh, uh, we're getting close to time here, um, but let me say that this program is being funded actually by something uh, called the Community Partnership for Energy Efficiency Engagement Initiative. I'll try to say that a few times fast. I double dare you, but that's actually um, that's actually EverSource and UI have gotten together, 
And they're basically saying, we'll take people like the Energy Conservation Committee that, that Bill Craddy spoke about um, and, and give them some, some money to host, host events, to put up signage, to um, conduct tours, to pull people together. Um, and so we're actually the utilities are working. I, I don't want to take their name in vain, but the utilities are really promoting this kind of community engagement. And our plan is to stay in some form or another over the whole course of 2022. So you will have other chances. And I would invite those of you who are connected to your own networks, whether it be school networks, uh, Rotary Club, um, environmental groups, uh, homeowners associations. Faith groups, yeah. yeah. Any, any groups like that. Keep this in mind as an initiative. Um, either Deb or Bill or some of the other members on the committee, uh, Amisha, if she can um, get, get enough time away from school, we, we can come out and do a, a presentation. Um, our, our contractors are, are going to be available as well. We hope to, when the weather gets a little bit warmer, to, to show up hopefully with some units that people can touch and feel. And, um, and also along the way, um, as we're promoting at home efficiency and clean heating and cooling, uh, to the extent that something like battery storage comes up, this will be an opportunity for us to also make Bethel residents you know, aware of that. And when you hear, Ryan, what was it? 0.9% over 10 to 15 years? 0.99%, three to 10 year term. Three to 10 on your, years. On your bill, on your electric bill. So a, a lot of this stuff is totally within people's grasp and they might that's another advantage of this energy coach that i heart my home that we're talking about there are a, a, a lot of ways to get this done if you just know where to look so i will also add to that that um the heat smart bethel team is looking for volunteers to help get the word out so if you can um join us for that you know just a meeting a week at most and it'd be great to have more folks joining the, the team for sure and bethel is also looking for those who are interested in the heat smart program that would like to be a part of the bethel uh, sustainability commission they're looking for uh, people that want to do to become involved in that standpoint too all your friends and neighbors right yep <laughs> For sure. But well, energy savings and sustainability go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. That's absolutely true. I think well, those are great words to close on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody. Really thank you so much. So have yeah, a good night, you. everybody. And we'll get the word out. Oh, we're doing this again next Thursday as well. So let your friends and neighbors know they can get all their answers to their questions. So spread the word. And I did, oh, I should say, I did put the, the link to the Bethel webpage in there. I urge you to take a look at your own page. It's, it's the paint is just drying on it. It's not all final at this point, but the other pages you can look at, you can look at what our other towns have done, see some of their, their ideas and, uh, it's a great way to spend a Saturday night looking at a heat pump page. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank Have you. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.